Hello, my name's Alexandra Cameron. I'm a natural light photographer from the UK. Um, I got into photography after studying film at university. Um, I found that photography was a lot more immediate, which was satisfying to me because I don't really like to wait. Uh, so I got to play around uh, if I had an idea that same day. Um, I specialize in portraiture because I'm fascinated by people and their stories. Uh, and I shoot all of those natural light um, in this setup actually, which is kind of out of a glorified shed, uh, which I really like because it's accessible and people can recreate it quite easily. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about me. So the kit I generally use is uh, my trusty Canon 5D Mark III. Uh, I've also been playing with the Canon R recently, which has been amazing, so much lighter. Um, and my go-to lenses for self-portraiture or fashion, uh, will be my 35mm 1.4 um, and with portraiture in here I generally use the 85mm uh, 1.4 and if I'm lucky um, an 85mm 1.2 but um, harder to get hold of because I can't quite afford that yet. Um, yeah. So we're here today to talk um, about women in the industry uh, which is a um, really important topic for me because obviously uh, there's quite a lot of emphasis of men in the industry in particular being hired in higher places and women don't really get a voice in in uh, those places and be able to shoot for those bigger publications or get the bigger jobs which is a real shame and it um, means a lot to me to talk about and be represented in that way um, so uh, not only that but I um, photograph a lot of women I think I prefer doing that because as a woman myself I think I can understand how uh, I want to portray other women um, and understand kind of a little bit more about their trials and tribulations in life, what they've been through and how hard it is to be photographed even. So um, I like to play on that. I like to play on the uh, strength and fragility in women and really try to show that in my work. Um, and also kind of make people feel confident, um, which again is something that is kind of throughout my work in particular the confidence shoots that I do um, with everyone and uh, I, it helps me as well navigate through life because I suffer a lot with lack of self-confidence so seeing women being brave and putting themselves out there and being vulnerable really helps me to remind myself to be more confident uh, within myself. I know that my own experience with self-confidence um, it's been quite a journey, to be honest, because I grew up in the age of um, size zero in the 90s and uh, gossip max, you know, uh, completely laying it into models and actresses, photos on beaches of women who gave no consent to be photographed and unflattering angles and it's it's something that stays with you. you. Society tells you that you need to be thinner and you need to be um, prettier and you need to be a particular way to be accepted and to be um, celebrated, actually. And it definitely left its mark with me and still does. Uh, I struggle every day with... Um, myself, my body, how I look. Am I supposed to look this way? Do I need to buy all these products and, you know, do my, dye my hair and, and uh, you know, try and make my eyelashes look longer or my lips look bigger and all those things that society has told me for absolutely years. And it's fortunate that recently I think the tide is slightly turning and we're seeing way more representation. And, you know, to Instagram's credit, there are a lot of wonderful people, you know, on that platform that uh, are giving awareness to different body sizes and it's really empowering but it's definitely something that still needs attention and we need to build because there's definitely a beauty ideal that is uh, almost the same as it has been for, for, for you know hundreds of years and we need to tackle that and try and get more representation out there. Uh, I know that most of the emails I get with regards to confidence shoots is people terrified. They're terrified because they've spent most of their life unconfident and not loving themselves and uh, they're terrified to write it because they know that they need to do something to um, change that. And it's a lifelong thing to try and train yourself out of. Um, I think a confidence shoot is something that could be a first step. It could be something on a journey to self-confidence and self-love. Um, but yeah, it's a terrifying thing to do because you're really putting yourself out there in the most vulnerable way, especially if it's something that you're deeply insecure about. So 
uh, it's a real responsibility for me and um, a real gift to be able to give back to someone who is, you know, uh, struggling with that um, and make them see that they don't need to have low self-confidence, that they're absolutely amazing just as they are. It was only about four years ago that I started shooting Natural Light Studio work. Um, I was really inspired by um, what seemed to me Natural Light uh, Studio work on online. Uh, Emily Soto was was a photographer who uh, a majority of the time shoots um, film, but uh, I was just so incredibly inspired by her portraiture. It was really raw and uh, the depth of field was really beautiful and uh, really powerful work. So I kind of thought, mm, if I like it, I got to, you know, experiment and try and see if I can do it. And I didn't know her setup. I didn't know how she shot. So I basically hung a sheet inside a garage, uh, which creates kind of like a really nice um, vignette, um, which is similar to the setup I'm in right now. Uh, and it worked. It was it was rusty, but it worked. And I took some self portraits and then I got some friends in to try and out that setup as well. Um, and then it's really become I don't know, part of what I shoot and what I offer and, and actually one of my favourite parts of how I shoot. Uh, and then over the years, I've, I've expanded as well into not just shooting friends or shooting typical models, but really trying to capture uh, plus size women and larger bodies because they're not as represented and I actually find it incredibly beautiful. Um, I remember when I shot Body Posi Panda for something, uh, and we also did a project where we were um, being interviewed and chatting and she mentioned the texture that you don't that you get from a plus size woman's body that you don't get from a, like a slimmer frame woman um, roles are incredible and it's something that people I don't know don't shoot as much and it's hard to find women who are really comfortable with that because of what we've been taught by society so um, it, I made it more of my business to try and shoot those incredible women who are really confident about their body and the shapes they make uh, when they sit down and the shapes they make when they stand up and everything in between. So it's been a wonderful journey um, shooting larger women and uh, really getting those raw portraits of them um, and their confidence in front of the camera. Over the years, uh, my way of learning was being really inspired by other people's work. Um, and in doing that, I kind of would try and emulate those photos just to see if I could shoot them. Um, and it was only a couple of years ago that I realised that uh, off the back of that, that I was really kind of shooting one type of person, which was very much a, a slender model type, to be honest. And uh, I was a bit ashamed of that when I realised and uh, I've made it like very much input uh, it's now really important to me to diversify and not just um, in terms of size but in terms of uh, diversifying in terms of color uh, in terms of um, you know sexual orientation uh, people who represent um, LGBTQ community uh, basically I don't want to just shoot one type of person I want to make sure that I'm shooting all different types of people because I am fascinated by people. And it's just, it's quite shameful that it took me up until only, you know, a couple of years ago to realize that I wasn't really representing that and that I wasn't really um, reaching out to those kind of people. I think possibly because I was scared um, or that I thought that my, my Instagram feed didn't reflect them so they might not want to work with me. and. I'm, I'm done feeling scared. I want to make sure that I'm being more representative and, you know, it's not, it's not just because that's what I should be doing, but I want to, and uh, I'm going to do that a lot more, much like I have recently. And um, it's certainly a more interesting, it makes my work a whole lot more interesting. So um, I'm going to be trying harder all the time at doing that. I know that throughout my photography journey that um, I often would f try and shoot things that have really inspired me. So if I found other people's work um, 
that I just thought was absolutely incredible. I'd try and recreate it and I'd try to shoot images like those so that I could learn and see if I could shoot those myself and become better and then find my own style. But I realised only a couple of years ago that in doing so, I was really only telling one type of story and shooting one type of person. And uh, it's become deeply important to me to share other stories and um, shooting other type of people and making sure that my feed is more diverse and, and uh, more inclusive um, because there are so many stories out there and so many important people to see and voices to be heard. So if it's definitely, I know that diversifying is now, you know, a really important part of, of what I do and how I shoot um, going forward. And uh, it's really exciting because it makes my work way more interesting um, and more powerful and more important. And I should have been doing it all along, but I'm just really, really glad that uh, I realized it and I'm changing now. Pretty much my whole photographic um, journey has been with natural light. Uh, I realized a couple of years ago why I really love shooting with natural light. And I think it's because it's the closest to what I see with my natural eye. Um, you know, artificial light in these harsh studio lights, I don't, I don't see that every day. And certainly it's not how I see people. With people, I see them um, every day out in the open and in window light. And, and what I also realized was in, ter in terms of the way I try and use natural light is again, I'm trying to replicate what I see with my natural eye. So my natural eye can see uh, shadows and light really well. It balances it out right in my brain. Um, but the camera can't do that. The camera will see harsh, uh, harsh light in darkness and harsh light in, in sunlight. And so what I really try and do is use the most natural, even light so that it replicates what I see in real life. Because what I see in real life is what I love. That's what the images that I see in my head that I want to try and recreate. It's all kind of in my day-to-day -day life and in the settings I see and in the beautiful woods in autumn or in um, at the beach, <laughs> you know, or um, in a meadow, whatever it is. Uh, and also window lights, incredible. I'm sure everyone knows that. So I always try and replicate that. Um, uh, so that carries over into all of my work. So with my natural light studio stuff, really I'm trying to create the most even light because I want my camera to see what I'm seeing in front of me. I don't want to mess about with it necessarily in post. I want to get it in the camera because that's what I see in front of me and it's what I'm finding beautiful. Um, that goes on to uh, the confidence shoots that I do, um, which is using all uh, window light. Um, so big beautiful window is the most perfect uh, light source you're going to need uh, beautifully even it's why everyone takes selfies in front of windows okay because it's beautifully even and uh, you look great so I really try and harness that in nearly everything I do so I recommend uh, if you're interested in shooting with natural light just try and get the most even light you can if that's window light do that if you're able to create um, a kind of setting that's like set back then you're going to get diffuse light. It's going to be great. It's basically window light as well. Uh, if you're shooting in the woods, then you've got a canopy of trees giving you even light. Uh, and um, I really recommend that because it means that you're shooting what you're seeing. And um, I don't know, reality is not scary. Reality is beautiful. <laughs> Let's try and capture that more. So if you're a fan of natural light and you want some tips, um, I can certainly try and give you some. So first of all, uh, if you're new-ish to photography, you want to you kind of experiment a little bit more, I definitely recommend self-portraiture. Um, nearly every photographer I know, my peers, they all started in the same boat and experimented with self-portraiture. So what you need is uh, a tripod, you need a remote, and you need isolation. I don't know, that helps me because I don't really like, when, you know, if anyone's around trying to watch me. So. Um, I try and find a location I love and uh, growing up that was fields. I absolutely loved fields. I loved wheat fields, poppy fields if you're lucky enough. Um, just go out into those fields on your own with your tripod and your remote. Not too far, you know, don't, don't get, get lost or anything, but uh, go out and just have fun. Um, it's kind of weird to do it, uh, but you know, I find that just shoot a hell of a lot and there'll be one in there you probably like. And that's still true to this day. 
Um, that's actually true with most of my photography. So another tip I would say, or certainly how I shoot, is very quickly and a lot. So uh, I really like how people uh, move naturally. And if I can get an in-between shot of when they're moving and they're kind of a little bit unaware of the fact that I'm shooting them, um, that's always going to be the killer shot. So uh, shoot quickly, um, even if it means that you're going to get three photos out of a thousand shots. I'm really honest about that. That's how I shoot. But I'm OK with it because it means I get these kind of more dynamic and more interesting shots that are a little less contrived and a little less uh, staged which is kind of what I hope to do anyway, because I want to photograph the person. You know, it's not necessarily um, like a really fantastical backdrop. Uh, even with my giant series where I, my incredible boyfriend builds these uh, giant props, um, that's pretty fantastical. But I even in those try and get this kind of like naturalistic, um, like pose or, uh, you know, kind of vibe for, from the shoot. When I'm shooting people, uh, in particular confidence shoots, but actually pretty much when I'm shooting anyone, I talk a lot. I talk a lot right now. You'll see what I mean. You know, if you talk a lot, it puts people at ease and it makes them feel like silences are the worst. You know, like imagine shooting someone in complete silence. They're going to be terrified and they're going to reflect that in their body language. So just chat to them, even if it means that half the shots that you're taking are like shots of them going, because they're, you know, in the middle of a sentence. It doesn't matter because it means you're putting them at ease. And I really find that that makes a massive difference. I also think it makes a difference because they realize that you're not intimidating. And it's a really intimidating setup when someone's behind it. You can just see a lens uh, and you, yeah, you, you're kind of like scared because you just that's all you're seeing. Uh, talk to them throughout and they'll realize that you're the person behind it and you're not intimidating and you're not judging and you're not scary. Uh, it really puts people at ease and it really makes a difference in my work. In particular, confidence shoots, if you're interested in shooting those as well. Um, that's terrifying. Uh, just remember that going in, that the person's probably terrified. So try and put them at ease as much as possible. And that means talking, um, being sensitive as well. Leave the room when they're changing, you know. <laughs> Use a blanket, all those kind of things. Uh, and in terms of shooting techniques, as I mentioned before, natural light, it's beautifully even, um, really flattering. Uh, all of, the, all of the good things, just to definitely do that. Obviously shooting natural light, I'm gonna come across those sunny days. And there's a real myth behind sunny days. Like uh, someone will show up for a shoot and be like, oh, it's such a nice day outside. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. because it's actually really tricky light to shoot in. I reckon uh, what I've noticed is people from Australia, you know, they shoot in direct sunlight so well, probably because that's what they have most of the time, not in England. OK, we have rain and we have cloudy days and it's actually really fortunate for me because I mean, it's the light I've learned in, but it's the light I love because it means it's really uh, natural and even. Um, if you are going to shoot on those harsh, sunny days, which, you know, don't not shoot, on them, you know, I've done weddings where you can't do anything about the fact that it's a sunny day. Either seek out the shadows, which I also recommend. But if you are going to shoot in those harsh lights, the best you can probably do is try and lift them in post, uh, which, you know, the post-production um, programs that are available nowadays, I edit with Photoshop and I edit with Lightroom, they can lift shadows really quite wonderfully and, and make it appear a lot more even. And it can create a whole different look in itself, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, don't be deterred if you come across a really sunny day and you're not really sure how to. I also know that you can kind of cheat and create um, a diffuser with a, a sheet and two sticks, for example. You might need a few more people involved, but there are other ways to get around it. Uh, but yeah, if you're going out on your own, just uh, try and seek shadows or have a play around in post-production. I think my favorite thing about shooting in natural light and why I gravitate towards it uh, and kind of avoid artificial light as much as I can, there's a depth with natural light that you just don't get with studio lights. Studio lights kind of flatten everything almost. <clears throat> so when I'm shooting uh, portraits, for example, uh, with natural light, I think that there's something a lot more raw. There's an atmosphere there that you don't get if you're shooting with studio lights. So I, it's a message I really try and get out there to try. Don't shy away from shooting stuff that looks like studio when you're only using natural light, because I've based the last five years around it. And I actually think there's so much more you get from a photo personally using natural light than you'd get from studio lights. I think it almost is like you're able to catch more of the real person.
that's, that's sat there in front of you because because of the depth involved and because of the atmosphere. I think, I don't know, there's a lot more to it. Um, so it's definitely my favourite thing. I study film at university and there's a reason for that. I really, really love watching stories um, and visuals. Don't get me wrong, like visuals are incredible. There's something about cinema, especially from my favourite directors that marry visuals and story. And when that happens, it's like absolute magic. So if I'm really honest, some of my favourite photos tend to be the ones that have kind of like um, a scale or a, a cinematic storyline going on where it feels like there are people in it that are about to go on an adventure. Uh, a photo that springs to mind, which I will probably never be able to recreate or be able to, um, yeah, beat, is uh, an image that I took uh, of my brother and his girlfriend in the woods during uh, a really, really foggy day. Um, I don't know what happened to foggy days, I swear they don't happen anymore, but this particular day it was really foggy, which I actually find really um, anxiety inducing. I suffer from anxiety, so uh, I really get quite claustrophobic in fog, so I make myself go out and shoot in it so that I just don't sit at home freaking out. It also happens to be really beautiful to shoot in, so if you're from a foggy area of the world, San Francisco, I see you, I'm jealous, uh, then go out and shoot in it any chance you get. Um, but yeah, in terms of that day, I went out with my brother and his girlfriend to um, my favourite woods, uh, which I've shot in a lot, um, which reoccurs on my feed or on my website, you'd probably see. Um, but I went out that day and shot this image of uh, my brother and his girlfriend just standing you know, centered uh, with the trees either side and this kind of like mist of fog. It basically came out very kind of Stranger Things-esque, but I really love it because it feels like they're looking out into this abyss, um, into like a journey they're about to take or um, a challenge or I don't know. And it's just those two. It's just those two on their own about to take it on or you being shocked by the the beautiful scene in front of them or something i mean it's 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 a it's a, a photo that can take many, many storylines that's why i think i love it the most um so it's probably got to be one of my favorites as a photographer i think the most rewarding thing i've done in my career feels weird to say career makes me seem really um important or something i'm not saying i'm important but within my career i would say the thing that i have gotten the most from is shooting confident shoes probably because of my own journey with confidence. Um, but it's been so incredibly rewarding. So if there's anything I can like encourage people to do is try and take photos that empower other people. And because it teaches me every day that being confident is really powerful. Like I see it in front of my lens when these people come in who are really scared, but you can see that push in them and this confidence that comes over them. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, it changes me in that moment. And it reminds me every day that, you know, just because um, I don't look like the, uh, the actresses that are in the films I see or, <clears throat> or in the magazines, that doesn't mean I'm not worthy too. So um, yeah, I really recommend either getting a confidence shoot or try shooting them because it's one of the best things I ever did. So I wanna talk about two people that really inspire me and have helped me broaden my work and uh, explore different ways of shooting um, and storytelling as well. One of them uh, I mentioned earlier is Emily Soto. Uh, in terms of the natural light studio stuff, she, just look her up, you're gonna fall in love straight away. Uh, she's, her career is strong as well and it's really wonderful to see a woman who is um, shooting really important work and really important people and for really important publications. Uh, because as we know, that's usually dominated by men. Um, so that's really wonderful. So look up Emily Soto. Also, Nirami Firebrace. She is someone I followed for such a long time. She was someone I found really early on uh, in my photographic journey. She is incredible at storytelling. She's incredible at capturing people. I think what I liked most about her work is how naturalistic it was. It was not forced or contrived at all. There was something really fluid and beautiful about the way she captured people. You could tell she was really capturing them. Uh, so that really put it into the forefront for me to try and do that. Although I don't know how she does it still, even though I've met her and shot with her, I don't know how she is able to capture people and their essence so incredibly well. 
um, probably because she's a storyteller herself, so she has um, a way of capturing other people's stories and probably a way of making them feel at ease. Um, but I really, really recommend um, going to follow her and you probably are already, but if you're not, go follow her. She, she's absolutely wonderful and actually a really, really wonderful friend too. So uh, really fortunate enough to call her that. Go check those people out. It's interesting being a woman in the industry. And I'll tell you something that you might not have expected. The reason that I call myself Alexandra Cameron on most of my platforms and also in articles, I make sure they credit me as Alexandra Cameron or if I'm doing an interview, I kind of try and make sure that they call me Alexandra Cameron. It's because if I'm called Alex Cameron, people think I'm a dude and I'm not a dude. <laughs> I'm really proud to be a woman in this industry. I'm really proud to f be a woman photographing women in particular. Uh, so it's a weird one that people might not expect. Um, but it just shows how quickly people assume in this industry that you might be a man. Uh, it was the same all throughout university. It was, it was Mr. Alex Cameron on a lot of things. But no, I'm Alexandra Cameron. I'm a girl and I'm cool with it. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. It's been really interesting to talk about my experiences as a woman in this industry um, and how I work and why I shoot and who I shoot and uh, my career, it's, it's been really fun. And I know that WEX has a load of videos coming up um, centered around other women in the industry, um, which is gonna be really exciting. So definitely check back and thank you for joining me.